Mr. Mendola, welcome at the Policy Center for the New South. Thank you. you are Deputy of the Italian Parliament, center-left, and former Minister of European Affairs of the Conte government. Let me ask you the question. The election uh, in Italy towards the right-wing uh, government has surprised many people, and some people are worried what will happen. Uh, can the present Italian right-wing government achieve what most previous governments did not achieve? The reform of government, uh, climate change, migration. Can they do this better than others and why? I hope so, because first of all, when you are a member of the parliament, you look always the interest of your country. How the country develops, how the economical growth will be strong and stable and how the social cohesion will increase the benefit of the people. Of course, I have an ideological approach that is different from the current government, but looking at the international profile of our country, I think this government will be in continuity with the, with the past, especially with the experience, the last experience of the Mario Draghi government that was so successful at the European level for the credibility, the the strong impact on the economical decision. As you know, in Europe and worldwide, we are not living in a, in, let's say, in a peaceful situation. peaceful situation, first of all, and then the effect on the economical growth is quite flat at the moment. So my impression, looking differently, the history of Europe from the right wing, my impression that on foreign policy this government has to go on on the same line that we always said as a country. So I'm not worried about that. So the idea of Europeans that there is a fascist prime minister, Meloni, who's voted in September <laughs> no, is false? It's false. It's not, uh, fascism is something that is unfortunately a tragedy of our history that we closed it. It's a right-wing government, more nationalist, but I already saw from the first steps in government that uh, uh, Madame Meloni is looking for European cooperation. Also because worldwide we have uh, just a community that help even the national interest. And this is the European Union dimension. So it's a benefit also for this government coming from a different background to have a stronger Euro Europe for energy, for defeating, let's say, um, the, 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 the risks of a, an economical recession. So we need to work all together. Even on topics like migration, no country can do on uh, its side alone. We are in Africa, we are speaking in Africa. Africa is very concerned about migration and uh, the reception of migrants in Europe, in Italy or Greece. Or So what can the government do of Italy today, which promised to stop migration, to, they promised to send them back if they had to. What of this kind of rhetoric is reality and what is fantasy? Look, my opinion that when you face the reality that migration is an historical uh, movement of the civilization because it's logical that from country, a continent like Asia, like Africa, there is a movement of people. What you can do is, first of all, to legally organize the, the flu between the continents. And secondly, to invest in cooperation in Africa, especially with the country of origin and transit of migrants. Uh, of migrants. And this we can do. In the last European budget, there is a, a, a huge space of investment for this kind of cooperation because there are countries that are suffering from migration because they are losing a lot of energy. And there are countries that are just transit of uh, uh, migrants' flu. So my impression is that if we move as European Union, we can tackle this uh, issue not using ideological stand, but using also a new way of cooperating between the two continents. Yeah, but I'm surprised you say this. You almost, it's almost the Marshall Plan for Africa. Uh, isn't almost each country in Africa affected? It means it's not only a few. All of these Africans, or not all Africans, but many, are dreaming about going to the United States, Canada, or Europe. So if you have to 
help each nation of Africa, 50 nations, Europe's people will not support that. Depends. My impression is that if we start the cooperation using some grassroots needs like food and agriculture of new generation, water consumption, climate change, that is a problem for, for globally, but the two sisters, Europe and Africa, they can join on this project. We can develop new strategy of cooperation. Cooperation for many years was just based on, uh, let's say... Uh, Giving money and... Uh, uh, even not, even sometimes you, you see many declarations, uh, declaring solidarity and so on. Now we have to go specific and to see which are the problems that are uniting us and how we can solve it. Many African countries, they have energy problem, but we know that the, the energy of the future is based on renewable. Europe has the technology. So, solar, solar. Solar. So we can make joint venture that help the country to have an autonomous development and give also the possibility to Europe to, 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 uh, to go out from the fortress thinking that we are surrounded by people that want to invade. Sometimes I heard this uh, argument in Europe that they are quite basically out of history. In your new, in your new government, they were talking about that. You uh, don't but, want to say it. <laughs> but me, I love my country, so uh, even if there is a government from another political parties, I always defend it. I know, I think that the reality will give the impression to all the Europeans that this new stage of our of our century, we need to go out from the from the wall and to understand how to cooperate with other continents, especially with Africa, that is our sister. Do you feel that the uh, European Union is helping Italy or Greece or the countries which are receiving migrants in masses enough, or is there not a disregard of the Scandinavians or the Germans say this is your problem? No, I think that uh, there was a time where Italy was alone. 2014, 2015, Italy was receiving many arrivals, especially legal arrivals, and there was no coordination among the Europeans. Now, step by step, this coordination is increasing. I don't want to hide that there are some problems. There are. But the coordination between the country, European countries is necessary coordination in terms of arrivals, but also in terms of secondary movement. For example, Germany and France are the first two countries for secondary movement, people that are moving within the European Union. But, you know, the, 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 at the end of the day, the, the base of the decision is also they have to be confronted with the reality. So if you confront with ideology, you don't get anything. If you confront with the reality like it's going on, we are going to have some uh, results. A last question, uh, a lot of people are coming from Libya, many come from Lebanon, some come from Morocco moving to Spain. How do you want to stop that movement? You mentioned legalizing uh, reception stations, but are they capable and willing to do that? But there, there are different cases. With Morocco there is more cooperation, for example. Libya is first of all a political problem because the state control of the, of the country is allowing many human traffickers to, to make their tragical business. Tunisia is living not a particular, let's say, uh, is living a difficult democratic process. So, depends on the country. What is important is that the European Union go to the country, goes there and organizes it, check the problem, check how to help. If we think that we have to wait that the problem arrive in our house, waiting that probably never happened, this, is, this was the mistake. Nowadays I feel that there is a slight change and I hope that it's not a question just of security cooperation in terms of my migration, but it's also economical and new development development based on uh, on some common issue like the green deal that is the big big challenge for all of us so you think there is hope and there is a solution absolutely when there, when we start with the solution the, the hope is becoming also a reality thank you very much it was great pleasure my pleasure